class is going to be all about color drags, like which is the great difference. Like obviously the, the great difference between gi and no gi jiu jitsu is the gi, right? But uh, but in general, like um, if some principles uh, are really universal in uh, no gi, like for example that you you always you don't want to give away underhooks, right? Really good principle in general. In gi, you can kind of get away with underhooks, for example, sometimes, because the collar grip is, or collar control is at least as strong of a control as the underhook, and it's closer. It's easier to get. It's easier to get the collar grip as opposed to getting an underhook, because it's closer, right? Uh, otherwise, like judo, otherwise judo would look like Greco-Roman wrestling in a gi, but it doesn't. Okay, so there is something to this color grip. Um, because color grip, you can. Uh, mm -hmm. Who will I uh, use? Who wants to be the <laughs> Come. Uh, so, uh, so color grip, like it's a good thing because, like underhook in general is a, a like a pulling grip. Okay, color grip is both. It's pulling and it's pushing. That's, that's a major difference. So, and obviously the other thing is that um, uh, between gi and no gi jiu jitsu, uh, I'll go to butterfly guard, just come to your knees, is that he can like take underhooks, right? Take underhooks, and I can be still dangerous in the neck area with chokes. That's one thing, and, and also the thing is that he can have underhooks, like he can take underhooks, but I can use, even if he has like good underhooks, I can, like, that would be screwed in no gi, unless I have super bendy legs and I can invert and go for leg attacks from being smashed. But in uh, gi, I can frame a little and I can kind of start to use and misdirect him with a color grip. So, so I'm not saying underhooks in gi are bad, underhooks in gi are very good, but I need to be mindful of the color. And that's why, and, and the color is also why there is, in some regards, and especially guard and guard passing, uh, color is one of the reasons that there is no, or one of the main reasons that there is no direct translation from some gi game to some no gi game and vice versa. Um, in general, no gi game translates to gi better, but, uh, but that's not universal. So, uh, color grip, to be able to drag from, from color. Um, we, we start off from seated guard and then we move into the standing position because it's uh, really the same. I think uh, collar drag is a very underused takedown or takedown setup from uh, standing. We'll, we'll finish with that. In general, there's, uh, uh, like there's <laughs> two ways to grab the collar really. It's, it's cross grab, which is most common. And I can go kind of higher, which I need for some jokes. In general, if I just wanted to use for attacks or drags and also framing, I want my fist in his collarbone area. Uh, also makes for a good frame to put into like neck area if I want to frame. Very good frame here, keeping the color. Um, you kind of like the lower fingers are what makes the grab strong. So, so you don't want to tense up your index finger that much. And you don't want to use the thumb too much. Like most important is that I get the bottom of my hand in, in the collar and I kind of tighten it here. Okay? Uh, really important thing about grips in general or keeping the collar grip in general and, and other grips and keeping the finger held is that uh, uh, I want to be smart. Like if he strips my collar hard, like strip the grip, I want to let it go. Okay? One thing is to let it go, or if I really don't want to let it go, I want to uh, make it so that I move with the stripping motion, or, or I kind of prevent, from, prevent him from applying pressure when he strips. So for example, if he goes for that strip, and I push it up, like he can't strip, okay, and I can maybe use it to come up from, uh, from seated guard position. Or if he already grabs my hand, uh, and I don't want to let it go, and he wants to strip, I will kind of pull him first, or pull him together with his, his stripping motion, okay? But if he strips, he strips. That's fine. Like you, you don't want to, your fingers to be looking like you're 60 when you're 30, okay? So, so be mindful of the grips. And uh, then I say, like, if you still like e jiu-jitsu and want to focus on your finger health, 
don't play spider guard too much and, and don't grab the pants too much. But you can't get away in D Jiu Jitsu without grabbing the collar. Or like you're you're like you're taking such a big thing away from you if you're if you don't pay attention. Collar. Okay, so cross grab, knuckles to the uh, collarbone area. Okay, the other side is the same same side grab. I can grab this way, and again, like here, it's not the thumb that's grabbing, but it's the fingers, and I get it like here. Okay, so so that's the that's the main main ways to grab. Uh, I won't cover any chokes today. Obviously, like if you have the same side grab, you have your baseball chokes. If you lean that way, okay. If you have the cross grab, you have your loops and exits. Okay, so plenty of material on the D chokes from bottom. They're all very good attacks from uh, butterfly guard, seated guard, especially against uh, a kneeling opponent. So, so you can add them together with uh, with uh, what we're going to do today. But we're going to start with a really basic like drag position. So, essentially, it's butterfly guard, right? So we're, we're here, we're fighting butterfly guard, and I'm getting grip. Okay, and I'm getting grip. Uh, my hook is active here, ideally at least one. So I can use two hooks and, and play like this. I personally like to keep one behind uh, to, be, to be more mobile. Usually the more flexible guys play with both. So I'm here. Okay, so uh, what's important about the collar drag, which is a really good sweep, uh, still used in very high levels in, in the competition jiu-jitsu. Uh, what's important is that I cannot force it. I cannot do it without him, him giving me momentum. And we're actually going to start with a simple reaction of, uh, like he said, like if he wants to strip from kneeling position, or if he starts to lean back, like he doesn't want me to drag, so, so he starts to lean back like that. We'll do a really simple like knee tap. Uh, so as much as possible, use his pulling motion to pull you up as little as needed, but if needed, post with that arm. So you come up and push, don't forget to push, and then you tap the knee on this side and you drive the ball. Okay, we start with that, so you, you kind of need to be a threat with that, at least to show you that. Um, we'll put uh, two things together at first, so it's the knee tap from cross, cross collar. Uh, if you know your chokes, you, you can kind of get the choke grip, but don't do choke finishes for now. If you have the uh, mirror side grip, you can also do, like if he wants to, let's say, I, I want to drag and pull, and he's like standing here over committing, you can still do that, uh, but you need to be mindful about driving across, so uh, the grip would take his shoulder with him. That's, you can, the rest of the technique is the same. And the final thing, uh, what we do is that in unison, both grips, this, but especially this, I can use it to snap down. So, for example, if I want to come up and he starts to pressure forward, but he doesn't do anything, so so he pulls back and they start to come up and he starts to You need to do that. Okay? So, snap down with the gi. Again, like you can grab whatever choke grip if you want. If you don't, just do the go behind, and that's two, two points by IBJJF rules, so you're good. Um, so play a little, take turns yourself, just try out the grip, yank, what, what it feels like to yank with it, both sides, what it feels like to come up for a knee tap, what it feels like to do the snap down. So play with that, switch on your own, uh, it's not like a competitive resistance drill, but the other one it moves around a little, uh, on your knees only right now, try it, one, two, three, no clap. <laughs> Uh, these attacks you need to always keep in mind. They're like gonna set up other stuff. And if the opponent is not actively passing, he's kind of getting a short breather, you don't want to give him the short breather. Like you, you want to yank him and you threaten to come up and if they start to push back, you do the snap down or vice versa. You try to do the snap down or kind of try to stand up to the snap down, they start to pull back or, or start to try to grab you, you move forward and you do the knee tap. This needs to be there, okay? Um, 
Because in guard, in general, I think it's a good metaphor, is that I stole it from Matt Thornton. So when on top, you're like a sniper, you're looking for your ideal position, and you want to do your one single attack, which has high percentage, okay? You want to establish good control, and then you want to do your one high percentage attack, okay? When you're playing guard, you're like a machine gun. You, you want to suppress the enemy. You're kind of randomly in multiple directions. If you're lucky, something hits, okay? The interesting thing is that when I was teaching in Germany, I was told not to use that metaphor, but, okay. Um, uh, I think it's, it's, it's nationality neutral, actually. So. Um, okay, so. Um, I'm trying to come up with a Talvis as a metaphor because I'm using Kim as a hooker, but I didn't so much. Uh, okay, so you have your kind of drags, and we'll go actually from here because I hope most of you know the basic color drag from uh, Guard, but we're actually going to cover what people already did. And this is, I hope, I hope a lot of you still don't know that because then it's going to blow your mind. If he grabs my pants, because that's what happens here, because his hands are free, right? It's, that's the most common situation. Obviously, I can do the standard thing, is that grab, strip one leg, and start to drag, for example, really good thing. But if he grabs both legs, in general, like, one leg is fine. Like, if he grabs, uh, if he grabs just this leg, that's kind of fine, because I can still scoot out and, whoa, there's an arm, maybe I can even pull it into some kind of attack. The problem is when he grabs on the same side, uh, don't grab this for a while, when he grabs on the same side that my arm is, doesn't matter if I have this or this, because now he can start to try to like move around here. Pins my legs, and it's kind of hard for me to move. Okay. So uh, and especially bad, like, and you're probably familiar with that. If you grasp both legs, like that's the scenario that happens actually. Uh, stand up for a second. It's like you start here. I want to get the color grab. Great, I got the color grab, and then he grabs my pants and runs around my guard. And uh, this happens, right? Probably has happened to most of you, has happened to me as well. So, doesn't matter, uh, let's do it for Mimi first. If you grab the color grab, uh, color grip and he grabs the pants, there is one reaction that I need to know and what helps me tremendously is that I post my arm, which should be posted anyway, and I turn and fold my knees under me. Um, just keep a strong grip and don't let go. So I'm doing this. Okay? And if it follows, like, that's the easiest sweep in the world. Mm. So, you grab the pants, I'm here, post, and I, I kind of, I turn away, I move away, so I'm not trying to, I can't do it like here, because he will just pass to my, obviously I can kind of frame, but still, nasty situation. I will use the strength of my legs, I will kind of post here, pull here, and. I almost go to like a turtle position while keeping the color grip. Okay? Hmm. Who's big and strong? Where's uh, uh, Adam? Where you're at? Where, when somewhere. Who's big and strong? So you look big. It's me. Ah, you did. So go to this side because I need to like it's kind of. Uh, get a decent grip. So, and here I post this leg, like he can't stop me from posting the, on the leg, right? So it's kind of like a technical stand-up. So, and I'm doing, and uh, uh, just follow so it would be comfortable to grip, keep the grip. So I'm turning and kind of into this position. And it's either of two things happens. If he follows, then he kind of gets into a really disadvantageous position. I have a good grip on the collar. I could sprawl if he doesn't let it go, but usually they let go. Okay? And sometimes if they're like if there's super big difference, if it's like I don't know, like 50 kilo difference, then sometimes what happens is that they uh, kind of hang on to your legs. And also uh, stand up. Let's try it from here. Same way it works from here. So I'm here. And now I can do my snap down, right? The grips again. And if he lets go, then we will uh, come to your knees. It's actually easier. So uh, it's either snap down, or what we'll do now is that I will turn, and it's enough if this one is let go. If the other stays, that's fine. If both are let go, that's also fine. 
So I do this movement and then return and see what happens. Whoop. Whoop. Okay, and that's your color drag. And in color drag, you want to be as sitting as possible, but at the same time, you want to slide down. You drag the collar across, you slide down. If there is a grip on my neck, uh, ideally, I would do the look and match thing, where I fish and I turn the knee out with my far neck. And then I start to figure out, I, I will keep, like what's different from Logi is that I will keep the collar grip, the collar grip for as long as I can. Because what happens is that if he starts to uh, come up again, I don't want to keep him down, that's bad. He's gonna just, like force himself up. That's bad. What I want to do is that if he starts to pull himself up, he will lift me up. I will keep it as long as I can. Only in the last second, when I can pressure, I will do this. And start to remove my legs. So, we'll try this, like, Take the collar grip, either one works, either one works, but cross is better. They grab your knees, try kneeling, try standing, and the movement is like this. Whoop! And if they came with you, it's snap down situation. And if they didn't and let go, it's here. And now reverse movement, but you see what's important is that I switched sides. I came here, here, and slide and drag across. Fish for the leg and let him drag you up. And now we figure out whether to get the leg out and you can go into single leg scenarios and all that jazz. Okay, try it. If you have questions, ask me over. One, two, three, maybe club. <laughs> Look here for a second, which uh, can come important detail. Um, so, it's kind of jujitsu, right? That's, that's kind of why we do jujitsu, why we're not resting or doing judo, is that because we're lazy. We, we want to go to the path of least resistance, okay? And, and even though, like, in the end, it's still a sport, and if you're going against somebody good, it's always going to be hard. Uh, so, so, unless you're deliberately playing, which is also very fun. But I take the path of least resistance when I can. So when he grabs my pants, and I do this, and he's kind of here, and does nothing, then the path of least resistance is the snap down. I don't do the collar drag from here, because it's not needed, because I can do like just like, uh, and that's fine. <laughs> and, and I'm okay. I can go for my loop chokes here. I can, if I want to, I can just move for the back. Here's my two points without any wrestling. That's excellent. So, so um, the, um, uh, the collar drag is for the situation, or when do I need the collar drag from that scenario, is that uh, I, I need when he starts to move and defend, maybe strip back up, uh, or maybe try to move towards my back. That's, that's the thing. Because I'm kind of also baiting, and especially if, if he keeps the grips, and you can try it when you don't, uh, like ideally I want to do this movement, this uh, uh, tucking the knees in movement as explosively as I can. Because then I can be sure it frees the grips. But if I'm kind of, I want to bait him, like he doesn't know that stuff, he's used to running around my guard, then I might do this. Okay, okay. what's your reaction now? What will you do? How will you pass my guard? Yes. Okay. okay. The thing is, and, and this is now, sorry, <laughs> but it was a good illustration. It was a necessary sacrifice. Um, and that's the same, same thing also uh, uh, when the opponent is, we will illustrate and, and you can do it like this. So, so have him try to pass the guard or, or try to do something and then do the drag, because then his movement will also help you to do this movement, kind of sliding movement. And the most common is actually when you do the attack, like just the attack, against the standing opponent. So stand up, so we're in this situation. Obviously, I can't uh, stand tall. Uh, I can't reach the collar from here, but he also can't reach my pants, so that's fine. 
So if he starts to come for my pants, like he starts to grab the knees, I will grab the collar. And now the important thing here is that against standing opponent, I need to either strip uh, the um, one arm, okay? So, so like actually, like either arm is fine. <laughs> so if I strip this, that's fine. That's fine. It's it's kind of I can move my hips. And also, if I strip this, uh, that's that's also fine. He can push me away, but at the same time, I can start to turn. So, but I don't want both. I don't want both on my legs. So I need to be aware that what is easier, if I just strip one, or if I'm uh, risking uh, to get past, he gets good grips, and if he starts to uh, run around, I will do this, whoop, okay? Uh, but, so uh, come up, uh, and if I strip one, then I can't, I won't do the collar drag here, because he's still. But if he starts to at least step in, in any direction, just a little, I will do this. Okay? And more than often, now my leg is not in between the legs from standing position. And now this frame and hanging here, it's super important. Because I, I won't let go. Because if I let go here, he will just face it. And nothing good will come of that. But it's important that if I hang here, I'm kind of framing it stiff. And if he starts to stand up, yeah, I can kind of, I, I have him stand me up. <clears throat> so the collar drag motion, the important motion here is that, and uh, this is slightly inferior for the cross drag, because it's kind of, but, but it still works, it still works. So I can, I can uh, stand up, I have this, this grip here, okay, and, and I'm, I'm trying to time it. So let's time it for now. He will start to pass my bar. I will strip and I will move around. Okay? And now obviously go for the hot single because it's right here for the take kick. Mm -hmm. So have your partner give you some kind of passing momentum and then dry the drag. Either from the double knees strip drag or from the standing, like, don't go for the drag when he's just standing still. If he's standing still, you should be going for ankle pick or maybe just try to stand up. That's also like a common setup. And that's again like the collar drag, stand up. The collar drag is about like becoming a collar drag queen or king or whatever. It's about like having active guard in general. If he doesn't do anything, if he's just like here, like doesn't he, he knows that I'm gonna drag. He doesn't want to pass to this side. What I will do is that I will try to snap him down, come up, I'm here, now maybe an ankle pick. If he pushes me down, and now maybe a collar drag. Okay? So collar drag needs some kind of momentum, some kind of forward momentum, so have your partner give it to you. Then you can practice, either from the double knee grip, free, then turn back, or against the standing opponent. Okay, try it. One, two, three, go. <laughs> so don't make any grips come to your knees. Come to your knees. So we can practice like a place where you can, as I said, like you can kind of drag here, you can try to come up. And you can combine those with the drag. And we will uh, do like a pre-exercise to what we're gonna do from standing. And what a lot of you are missing right now, like you're dragging across the motion is good. Like you're using the force here and you're hanging off the collar, that's also good. But I didn't emphasize the slide enough. So for this, when I want to do, uh, I can't do a static drag against the standing opponent because they are uh, too mobile on their legs. Uh, if I just drag, they will step and block my drag, okay? So that's why I need to use their momentum when they're standing. When they're on their knees, I will do the, I will try to do this, I will try to do the snap down, but I can also do the drag against a uh, kneeling opponent and also against combat base, step up the knee, against that as well. So then I have to pick this side preferably, okay? So, and how I can do it is that I still want as much momentum as I can, 
So I might be like threatening to ankle pick, for example, I might be kind of doing this, and he will, yeah, you see, this reaction. And now my ass has a bit distance to fall, and I will slide in as deep as I can, and I will try to hit his foot with my uh, hamstring here. So whoop, here, take this leg out, okay? And now I will slide. I will slide and turn to the other cheek. So, you see, I hit it with that. The danger of him forcing his weight into me, like in no uh, you know, that's, that's the way you're gonna give your back, but in no he would just step his knee onto me, like right now, like step his knee on, like on very, like yes, like this, or, or put that knee back. And that would be very, very bad. But here, this situation is safe because I'm hanging off the collar here. If he wants to put the knee in belly, I will just come up together with him and I don't even need to wrestle because I, if I keep the collar grip and I keep some control of the leg, I will come on top of guard and uh, I can start passing from this position because I usually, now I can get, I don't have to like shelf the leg and, and be that mindful about that like we did in Nogi because if I come up in here in that position, that's pretty good. Like I can now grab the knees myself and now kind of start to, and he also can't go to turtle because I can pull him back here and now I can maybe shelf the leg, so maybe a seat belt, maybe a fish for some other grip. So, uh, against full kneeling or combat base, both works, put both knees to the ground. So here as well, whoop, slide. Like hit the hamstring against his knee or his foot. And now, if I'm here, I hang off here, I straighten the tray, grab the leg, grab the hip, come up. Obviously, you can do your wrestling stuff still as well. Works really well with Key as well. Like, he's not going anywhere from this position. Like, he, he can't think about, like, okay, uh, try to turtle. Like, no, not gonna happen. Uh, try to take any guard position. No, not gonna happen really. Okay. So do the drag against kneeling or combat base opponent uh, by your own initiation. He has no grips. And then we'll finish with the standing drag. Okay, go. And, and obviously, if you're this tall, lanky, bendy type, you might want to play your spider guard and wrap the other person's lapel around your legs and do that stuff. But if your ass is heavy, you, the drag is a good, good attack. Okay, so and it's a definitely underused attack uh, from uh, standing position because it initiates like a guard scramble from which I have a high percentage chance to uh, end up on top and score takedown points. And, and like if we're talking about points jujitsu, starting off with two points lead is, is not a bad place to start off with. So, um, if I want to go for the drag from standing, I want to be the initiator. So if he takes any kind of grip on me first, uh, I usually strip him. So, and, and I would prefer him not to take any grip on me, so the general idea, what to keep in mind if you don't know about much about like stand-up grappling with Gi, is that I first focus on blocking his lead hand. So that's the thing. I don't want him to take a lead hand grip on me anywhere. So if he takes a grip, like uh, take a lead hand grip. So that's bad. I, I would rather not. Okay, let go. So I focus on what his lead hand is doing, and if he kind of wants to take any grip, just kind of. Don't let him. Best technique. Like it's like, don't let him do his stuff. Do your stuff. That's jujitsu. Okay. So uh, and then I want to take either lead or rear hand my grip. Which way is does he play? Like are we like uh, orthodox or southpaw? Doesn't matter too much. Like don't pay attention to that. Don't confuse yourself. But uh, the main point is that you want to deny him his grip and be first with a color grip. And consider it like to be really successful with it in competition or competitive setting, 
But think about it like you're going to punch his color. Like you're, you're not going to, it's, it's not like, ah, oh, here's his color, I'm going to take a grip here. Like, that's not how it's going to happen. It's about like denying it, being it, being and now I'm punching his color. Okay. I'm punching his color. Uh, I don't form a full fist, and that's why it's also not too painful. I'm not like literally punching, but I'm kind of going fingers first and trying to get a grip. Can also have this grip. I'll take whatever I can. This is best. Okay. And the second I have the grip, it's really important. Then I need to go. Like I can't wait because if I wait, especially if I'm not like a judo player, he's gonna take his grip. And now we're in this position, and now I can't do it anymore. Or it's too risky. Uh, it's too risky. I would need to strip and restart. So I want to go from a situation, ideally, where I have the grip, and he yet doesn't. I can be mindful about that, so if he kind of wants to take the grip, I can block it. So that's also good. And what I do now is that uh, uh, freeze in this position right now. So what I do now, I have the grip here, and I think about, like, this is like a handle now. It's like a handle or, or, or let's say if it would be pole dancing, maybe it also goes together with the name of the class well, like let's say it's a pole dancing pole, right? I kind of want to like use momentum to slide around it, okay? But actually like maybe pole is not such a good uh, metaphor because it's kind of, it's more like a rope, you know, he is like a rope and I want to like slide. I want to, I don't want to drag him, I want to slide on so if there's no opponent, what I'm actually doing is like, and consider the not here, okay? I'm sliding on this leg and I'm hitting his foot with my hamstring. And when I say slide, I mean slide. So it's like, so it's this, okay? So I'm kicking that foot first. There is no friction, there is no stopping. I do a slide, I throw myself on my side. It's not a high fall because you see I'm kind of squatting, but don't really squat because that will kill your momentum. I need momentum here. So I'm throwing this leg here. And I'm turning to my knees immediately. So that's the motion. Are you taking it on a step with your knee for the first? Uh, not really. So it's actually, I'm in this position and uh, it's not dangerous. So just uh, see you don't face plant your uh, hands with me. Uh, and it's not, it's not like I'm not slamming into his knee, so it's also safe that way. And I'm sliding with this here. So I'm throwing my weight here, and I'm not trying to, I'm not dragging him, okay? But I'm hanging kind of all my weight, there's a split second where all my weight hangs off his collar. So it's not like this. <clears throat> That's not gonna work. Because actually both of my feet, there's a split second that both of my feet come off the ground. So I'm here, and I can't show it slow. It's impossible to show it slow. So consider what I did here, and now pay attention to that. Okay, so this is the result. His leg is stretched here, and now I use that momentum to immediately turn. Okay, so you should be able to do that. Like it's, you can practice that on your own. You're not gonna get the mat burn if you have a gi on. Like obviously, don't go without spats if you're doggy. Uh, so I really slide, I, and I turn. See, you can kind of do it from here. So I slide, and I turn. Sounds like a good lower tree motion is the same. So you slide and turn, okay? So you're here, you slide and turn. And more than often, it's gonna be a full sweep. They're gonna fall onto their back, like naturally. Or, or on all fours, and then it's a familiar situation already. Okay? So, be ready. I want you to try it. If you're uncomfortable for whatever reason with that, practice your drags from the guard. But it's a really good attack standing. So let's do that for five minutes, and then soon we'll wrap up. principle to play with is that when I do the standing drag, applies to open guard drag as well, is that I can think about whenever they don't work for some reason or uh, 
usually it's because I'm, I, I don't time it well or I stop my own momentum because you see people kind of getting afraid and then they kind of like go like, okay, and now we're in a single leg situation and I, I'm supposed to be a good wrestler now and, and do, do that or whatever, is that whenever, there's, when, whenever these fail, if there is a chance and there's kind of this stop momentum here, uh, is there anything to feed through their legs? So uh, ideally it's the same grip that, that I have here. So if I let it with here and I can feed this here, that's a good idea. I can even like get this because now it's a super it's a super like hard position to defend. What is he even gonna do? If I stand up and he can do I don't have to know really wrestling or judo. Or or and to, to a certain extent like I can even go uh, like let's say I messed up, okay, color grip. We're, we're kind of, he's defending his color or whatever I can. And, okay, that's not a color, but... That's the oh. Okay. So, uh, so, if there's any cloth, like a sleeve or a lapel, a piece of belt that I can feed through, I can feed through the leg here, I can compensate for shitty single legs really well, indeed. Okay, and that basically color drags tied together with the single leg. So, so you can all train like if you're lapel stuff, it's like, oh shit, I'm gonna get work now, but no you're not, I'm not gonna work. I'm gonna go here. And like, I don't know. Okay, so uh, uh, so keep that in mind. If you do the following class and, uh, and have open mat time to play with, good warm up. Do a few collar drags and just keep in mind that a failed collar drag, be it stop momentum or a bad grip, I can rescue with feeding something through the legs. Okay? Uh, I'm out of time. My third class is tomorrow. Hope to see you then. I'm going to stay for two hours today, so if you want to catch me on the side of the mat, just come and talk to me. It was a nice time and see you tomorrow. Thanks. Thank you.